All right, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at Pushback Express by FS2 Crew. Now, I'm going to have a video coming out a bit later that covers the use of FS2 Crew for the Fly-by-Wire A320 along with Pushback Express. But in this video, I'm going to be looking at Pushback Express separately just in case that's how you're using it. So once again, from the command center, we can launch Pushback Express like so. You can go ahead and close that and give it a few seconds to open up. Right, so we've had quite a number of updates to Pushback Express over the last couple of months. Remember, the biggest one is if you are wanting to update, you now need to have the product manager. So we're not downloading updates from the forum anymore. Um, it's now all done through the FS2 Crew product manager. You can see we're on version 2.2.7 of Pushback Express. So with the product manager, it's going to automatically look for updates and install this for you. So a much easier way of updating your FS2 Crew products for Flight Sim 2020. Right, let's go and have a look at Pushback Express. So I'm just gonna move this to the side for now. Right, so let's go and take a look at the Pushback Express interface. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go into the settings and a lot of this has changed. One thing that has changed is now with the product manager, all of these custom settings are preserved whenever you update the software. So you won't have to come back here every single time to customize, it will keep those settings. As always, if you want to know what anything does, just mouse over it and the tooltip will tell you exactly what it does. So something else has changed is the way that we assign our hotkeys because we can now use the keyboard or joystick buttons. We have a slightly different method of assigning them before you kind of just click in here and uh, type the key that you want. Now we need to click on assignment, you hit start scan, and then just push the button that you want to assign. But don't forget to hit save changes to actually apply that assignment. The other big feature that has added is we now have an indicator for where the aircraft is going to end up after our pushback. Um, so I'm no longer going to be using rudder control, I'm going to be using distance mode uh, and obviously using voice control. So let's go and close this and now we have this display here at the top. If we want to now see where the aircraft is going to end up after we push back, we can turn on this arrow indicator and it gives us this orange arrow. So it's telling us where it's going to end up and which way it's going to be facing when it arrives there. So we can kind of zoom out and have a look and you can see that arrow is uh, so, sort of lined up with the, the taxiway. But one thing we do need to be aware of is the turn point offset. Now the turn point offset controls the distance before the indicator at which the tug will start the turn. Because obviously it can only turn with a certain radius. And I think the recommended distance is 31. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push back with a distance of 20 so I can show you what happens if that value is set too low. You can come in here and simply adjust these values and hit the update button and it's going to show you where the aircraft is going to end up. So I think I had it on about 68 here, worked kind of nicely and we can adjust this maybe to 20 and that will adjust our angle. So once we are happy with where the aircraft is going to end up, remember it's not going to end up exactly on this arrow. Our nose wheel is going to be somewhere further back because of that offset, but it's going to end up on that axis facing that direction. All right, so let's go ahead and use our voice activation to get our pushback. We haven't actually powered up the aircraft, but it's fine for this demonstration. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Roger. Okay, so that command will get the tug to connect itself up. And then once the tug is ready, uh, we can go ahead and ask for the pushback. While that's happening, I'll just talk about this little panel. Here we have some of our ground services, so we can call catering and baggage and jetways, etc. You can also run your pre-flight events. If you are using uh, Pushback Express in conjunction with um, FS2 crew for the A320, you probably won't need any of this because it can be uh, controlled automatically from there and you're going to be running pre-flight events from there which will automatically call these services. However, if you're using Pushback Express on its own, you can run the Pushback Express pre-flight events and you can control your ground vehicles from here. Okay, it looks like he's ready to push, so let's go and call for that. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger, release the parking brakes please. Brakes released. 
pushing back. Are we clear to start engines one and two? So we'll just wait for them to give us start clearance. If we were starting the engines, once they give us the clearance, start your engines at your discretion. There we go. We would now um, begin our engine start sequence. Okay, so just before we get to that orange arrow, it's going to start our turn here to our left so that the aircraft ends up facing to the right. Okay, there's the turn. Pushback complete, set parking brakes please. Brake set. Brake set. Roger, okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the right with the pin. Okay, so what has happened here is our turn point offset was too low. So I wanted to kind of show you how this works. This is gonna control how far away from that orange indicator it actually begins the turn. If it's too low, it starts the turn too late and cannot actually turn sharp enough to have the aircraft line up um, with the arrow. So I'm going to now increase that to 30 and we're going to do this again. And I'll show you that it actually uh, around 30 or 31 gets it to line up correctly. So I think actually I read somewhere on the FSU crew forum that 31 was the best. So I'm going to go and set this all up again and then we'll have a look um, at using it with an offset of 31. But basically what you need to understand is if you're ending up too far, your offset is too low. If you end up too close, your offset is too high. But I'd recommend using something around 31. Right, so here we are back with everything set up. Let's just go and change this to 31, which I believe is the recommended value. And let's now push back with that and see if we now line up a little bit better. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Roger. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brakes, please. Brakes released. Pushing back. Okay, so we should, there we go, starting the turn. And hopefully that should line us up nicely on that taxiway. Right, and there we go. So do you remember, you do end up quite a bit behind the orange indicator, but we are lined up pretty well. You could probably mess around with the, um, with the offset a little bit and, and fine tune it, but I think 31 is a decent starting point. Brake set. Roger, okay, the tow bar is disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the right with the pin. You can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks, have a good flight, see you later. Right, and now that that's done, um, it should automatically close the Pushback Express window like so, and we would continue with our flight. So that's just a quick video on some of the updates to Pushback Express and a simple tutorial with how to use the uh, distance marker uh, and the pushback with the voice commands. I will put a link up now to the full flight using FS2 crew for the fly-by-wire and pushback express. So if you want to check that out, you can do so at the top. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, if you find it helpful, you know what to do down below and I will see you in the next video.